I didn't really understand art to a certain, I mean, I understood like what art was because you take it in school and stuff. But in, in terms of feeling, I had no idea what, what, it, what it meant. And then I was in Barcelona, I don't know, maybe 1998. And I was looking at, was looking inside of the Gaudi's building on Las Ramblas, the one that, you know, it's got that funky ass, you know, facade. And I was, I was a bit hungover on, uh, <laughs> I'm drinking a lot of red wine, mind you. But I was like looking at the ceiling and it, it had like this just insane wave plaster work. And it was like the feeling that I got from it, like it sort of like sort of understood at that moment, like what what art actually was, or at least, you know, how it made me feel. So my name's Hank Haddock. I'm from Denver, Colorado, United States. I've been living in Daejeon, Korea for 21 years now. And mostly I'm working in furniture design, uh, abstract painting, abstract uh, wood pieces, uh, street photography, and furniture design. I think I said that twice. <laughs> let's, let's start over. Originally came here to write, um, so I write uh, novels, poetry. I got into abstract painting. We remodeled the house and I got into making furniture, which led me into making uh, abstract wood pieces that go on the wall. And uh, I guess that's sort of a four-pronged attack on what I do in my with my life. But architecture, like, has always been like the the thing that I like the most. Actually, like when I'm walking around in cities, like that's usually what I'm looking at, like people and buildings and architecture and what they've done to them. This is like the the dark room bench. It was a desk. Like I had found this metal desk base downtown, just on the street, and you know, you know, somebody had thrown it away. And I was using it for a desk. You know, I was using it to write with. I like basically like added this section on. It's all with reclaimed material. It's like a it's like another set of shelves basically. And then you know I used like the the edge the the trim on the front to sort of hold this all together. The carpentry sort of like the link to to art in general, art and architecture. I stopped doing that when I moved to Asia to teach English, but you know, I always did it a little bit. And then my wife and I bought a house in Daejeon about 11 years ago and we're remodeling it. And I just started making tables and stuff. And then I just, you know, like I said, like that, just sort of like to an obsessive degree, just making like dozens of, dozens of these things. And then just ended up like started making like, you know, some furniture. And then specifically now I copy, I use one of Garrett Rietveld's uh, designs the 1934 easy chair it's a crate crate furniture series i just i'm not i'm not going to design my own because it just seems like that to me that's like the perfect chair or at least it is at the moment i've made about 15 of them the carpentry just keeps coming back into my life because you you need to create spaces for your life and like for different things that you're doing and it just sort of just keeps coming up as needed i just keep keep finding myself out out in front of the house in the street cutting on wood irritating my neighbors I had one of the Garrett Rietveld's chairs that I painted pink. I guess my artistic uh, aspect to that design is I paint, paint them different colors, d different wood choices, upcycled materials. There's a print from my aunt from 1972 called American Aphrodite that I grew up with. There's a, it's of a woman's crotch and uh, her breasts. And my brother dubbed it tits and crotch when we were growing up. It's been in my life, my whole life. So I was like, I was, I was actually working on some uh, furniture and I was painting it pink. And all of a sudden I realized like this whole, like the chair that I had painted pink, I had bought, I had found a cabinet on the street that I had painted pink. And I realized like that the picture like sort of tied all of that stuff together. So I like, you know, I used that as like sort of a, it was more of an installation piece, which is something I hadn't done before other than my own house, which, you know, everybody's house is an installation, I guess, to a certain to a certain extent. It's all kind of perceived need, the, the ethos, I guess, if, that's, if that isn't an ethos, it's like the, it's all like a feeling. I feel like I need to do something or like, you know, with furniture, like I feel like I need to make something or like I find something on the street that needs to be, needs to be redesigned. You know, that's all in my head, obviously. I'm just not trying to like be anybody else. You know, I'm just, 
trying to trying to like be myself and like create stuff that makes me you know like there's those there's always those moments not unlike when I was talking about the Gaudi's architecture like there's just those moments that you're working on stuff you're working on stuff and it just feels like fucking toil and then there's always those moments where like you, you don't you, you're not necessarily like standing back like looking at it sometimes you're right in the middle of it but it just feels right whatever you've whatever you've just like finished doing or you're just about to you're in the process of doing it's just like all right this is like this is like what i'm this is this is what i'm trying to do even though I didn't know that I was trying to do it, it sort of happens. It's just how the it's just how the brain works, you know. I'm not even like trying to necessarily be like this uber creative person. It's just that it just ends up being like what I'm doing most of the time. I mean, I I'm, not, I'm like a, a modern human. I sit around on my ass watching TV just as much as the next person, if not more. I have a lot of free time, but it just it just uh, I don't know. I just it's just what I end up doing. It's the only stuff that really matters. Let's put it that way. At the end of the day.